This conference will now be recorded. Motion is to approve the consent agenda as presented. Mackey? Yes. Wood? Kip? Yes. Reeves? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Gurley? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Shannon? Yes. May I have the motion pass? Very good, thank you. On to new business. First item this evening is the public hearing for the 2020 budget amendment and the 2021 budget. Yeah. You want to that to help me or do you want me to make that presentation? I go ahead and open the queue. All right. Well, I need yeah. to uh, entertain a motion. To open a public hearing for the 2040 budget business at the 2021 budget hearing at uh, 74. Come in. Second. We need to vote. All of the members, Motion passes. Thank you. No. Um, we're just going to go through our all the things that we presented at the public discussion last week. Um, the council approved the budget summary, which sets the maximum allowable expenditures and tax levy for the funds. And so that's what we require for the voting on later. So we're, we're just going to go through and kind of talk about the budget. This is our budget calendar. We started back in May with uh, department heads and budget managers and budget. Um, and then we worked with the city council uh, in July on our budget work sessions. On the 27th, we had the budget hearing notice that went in the paper. And tonight we are conducting the budget hearing. 
and the MIU will decide on the final budget, and that will be published and sent to, or not published, but certified with the county by the county. This slide just shows our historical mill levies in 2005, 10, 15, and then our last at 18, 19, and our 2020 uh, mill levy. That's our estimated mill levy that will be for our 2021 budget. So the mill levy, we reached out and these are the proposed mill levies for the different jurisdictions in Wyandotte County. So it shows if all of the published mill levies um, go through uh, the mill levy will go down to 22 mill. And this just shows it shows that the city the city has I think about 20 percent of the total taxes that citizens pay 20 percent goes to the city and 14 percent is the majority of those the school district. And then 27.3 goes to the community college. Um, and then the county city and the city one point five. Of the city taxes, 54% goes to the general fund and 24% for debt service and 12% for the life of the first 2021 budget. The goals for 20. 21 or to maintain a high level of quality services. Um, we made we this year was a year like I don't think we ever really had for a long time at least with um, revenue projections needing to adjust those. Um, we've always had conservative budget or revenue assumptions, and we went back this year and looked at our revenues knowing that. Sales tax, our inter especially our entertainment venues, um, where we get a lot of our taxes through casino and moving taxes and sales taxes that so we were going to get hit by COVID. So we went and estimated our 2020 tax uh, revenues and lowered those. Um, and then for next year, um, we Lowered them. We lowered about 10 percent for this year. And next year, we set it overall is about a three percent lower than what we actually budgeted in 2020. Um, we we tried to balance this year in 2021 on revenue expenditure. I think we're about two hundred thousand uh, dollars off, which is pretty good given the environment we got. Um, we're continuing to invest in long term planning and continuous improvement, improve on our CIP program. I think in our CIP worksheet that we presented, and we'll have funding for 2021 and 2022. And beyond that, you know, we're just going to have to look at our revenue and how that comes in and plan. But for right now, we're able to fund our. 2021, 2022 uh, capital needs. And then we also this year are for 2021 going to fund in house for the new facilities. Total 2021 budget for all funds is $9,854,000. We'll go through the general fund. This shows a picture of our revenues. I think they I talked pretty much about the 20 to the first column shows the 2020 budget. Um, the second column is 2020 estimate. And like I said, that's about 10% decrease um, in the estimate from the budget overall. And then the 2021 proposed is about a 40% decrease from our 2020 budget. The total projected revenue for 2021 is 8.5 million. Again, a lot of the decreases are due to the COVID um, shutdown, entertainment, venues, businesses, uh, recreation programs. 
This shows what percent of our revenues come from different sources. The majority of our revenues from the general fund come from sales and use tax, 31%. Property tax accounts for 20%. Our reserves that we carried over, that we're estimating to carry over to 2021 were 28%. And then we've got franchise fees at 6%, casino at 3%, the port fines and fees at 3%, and miscellaneous other income at 9%. So, the selling cabinet is probably the largest package with the virus. Yeah. And the casino revenue, we have to back to that. No, I mean, I think I'm trying to think of what we got last month. I think we've got about 40,000, and we usually get like 65. But that was, you know, they're not at full capacity. Right. Um, so, Again, that's how far is it lying? It's two months behind. So, what we received in July was the many. So, I think that was the month they had. They opened. Now, I'm not sure. I think April, or like, so we never got in June, we didn't get anything. And then in July, we got, um, I think they opened the many. No, that, that's not. Yeah, um, right now we were, I would say, awarded that much. It still needs to go through. The county is actually hopefully approving that tonight. Um, then it needs to go to the state by the 15th, so a couple of days, and then the state has to certify um, that the funds that we are seeking are in fact reimbursable. Um, for the purposes of trying to expedite this whole process, a lot of there's two different ways, reimbursement or direct aid. We've just sought reimbursement for payroll expenses, which is an eligible um, expense. The hope would be that we still need to come back and prioritize what that funding is gonna go towards. Um, there are a lot of things in public safety. There's a lot of things, public works, um, the equipment that we have around us. There's, there's expenses that we have that we're gonna have to find somewhere. So. Yes, it does probably cover that much, um, but we still, I think, need to roll through what we need to do to, I guess, balance um, all the requests that every all the departments have at this point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've already submitted. Or we've already submitted it. No. Yeah. Kind of what it what the cares portion came down to for local governments was that in actuality, no local government under 500,000 people uh, was directly awarded money. Um, if you're reading the Kansas City Star right now, that's going out between the mayor of KCMO and then Jackson County. Um, but the reality is that the money came through the states. The state, states were um, basically set up a process to seek reimbursement. Um, that has been a very, very tight window to try to operate in. So again, from the administrative kind of convenience, which is Department of Treasury word that they use, we're just seeking that level for payroll, um, knowing full well that we we're going to have a lot of expenses just with COVID-19 related um, issues that we've run into in the past and what we're probably going to run up to uh, in the future. Yeah, and that's and that's been um, I 
think pretty clear, although some maybe not so clear um, across the state and, and county, but um, payroll is clearly an allowable expense. Treasury makes that clear in their, their guidance. Um, so that being said, we are, we're able to utilize that way of, of getting the full money that we should be getting um, and then allowing us to take a collective breath and then figure out the, the most effective ways of spending that money to mitigate concerns of COVID-19 in the past and in the future. Johnson County was down about 10%, but that was mainly due to the um, that we paid property that was partially built um, in that 2020 valuation. And then uh, this year they were given higher rooms, so now they are selected as a pilot for this. So that was the main reason for the Johnson County. This chart um, in 2018, the state limited cities on what they could increase property tax and revenue by. So there's a CPI and then some exemptions for debt service and public safety. So these are the calculations that we go through to see what we're able to levy without having to a vote of the people. Um, our 2020 budget levy was 3 million 190. Uh, the state this year said the CPI was 1.8 percent. So that gave us an additional 57,000. Um, new improvements and changes in use, they let you capture that property tax. So that gave us another 21,000. So the total increase was CPI and the changes in use and new improvements was 79,000. Then we're allowed our debt service um, fund uh, mil, uh, in revenue increase is about 43,000. So we're able to capture that for debt service. And then our public safety expense that's in fire, we increased by 37,000. So total uh, tax levy allowable for 2021 without a budget level. Three million three fifty four sixty four, and our levy is three million three fifty four sixty two. 
This is that same chart, it's just a little bigger. Uh, but this, this is the calculation that we had um, to get our levy. And um, with that, I think our middle levy is 6.07 dollars. Expenditures, this just shows 2019 actual, our 2020 budget, 2020 estimate, and 2021 proposed. Um, we went through uh, for 2020 and looked at um, mostly our our payroll. That's one of our biggest expenses to see what it is realistically going to be. And then we had a few bigger items like the comp plan was in 2020. We're not going to do that for 2021, so we decreased that. So so the the estimated column is 10. 10 million 401 for this year down from 11 million 635. A lot of that is that contingency that we budgeted in 2020 was 890. We put that down to what we knew we were going to be extended as contingencies. I think we talked to the council earlier this year about contingencies and that And the 2021 proposed. Um, Again, this uh, is a pretty limited that is pretty tightly, and um, we don't have any contingencies open in this budget and no transfer to capital to equipment rewards for this year. So our budget is 897 and that was so we could get the kind of balance of our income expenses. And, as mentioned, I think we were two hundred thousand dollars um, more in expenses. So trying to get that revenue expense to balance. And with this budget, um, we're projecting a thirty-four percent carryover of Luba um, from um, twenty-one if all revenues and expenses come on the way we have them proposed um, in twenty twenty. Uh, of the expenses of the 2021 expenses. General, general. general. So 34 percent of that is point seven. This just shows a chart of where the budget expenditures go in the general fund. The majority goes to police, 36 percent. Public works is 16 percent. Fire, 14 percent. Um, the others, um, those are three biggest pots, community development 6%, sport 4, recreation 5, finance 6. So that just shows where, and then we've got that new custodial. Water and wastewater funds. Um, Budgeted carryover from 2021 to 22 in water is estimated at eight months in wastewater, five month carryover. Um, the utility revenues that we budgeted for 2021 include an 8% increase in both funds in January of 2021. So those increases are um, those eight months and five months are dependent on that. Uh, and those were based on that current rate study that we did. Um, I think we kind of landed in the middle of the recommendations. So, so that's why the increase continues to be higher. We only have one budget amendment this year, and that's in the SID Community Improvement District, that the district where um, Westlake is. And that extra 1% sales tax in that district goes to the developer, and those sales taxes are higher than what we budgeted. So that's just to, for us to have the authority to pay it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. <laughs> 
So it's to increase the percent. We have to, if it, if we needed, I think we budgeted, I can't remember what our original budget was, but if we know that we're going to, we have to pay the developer. So if we know that based on how sales tax is coming in, that we have to pay out, we know that by the end of the year, we're going to go over what we budgeted the prior year or in this year's budget. Then we've got to do an amendment. And we normally do that at the same time that we do the current year budget because you have to have a hearing on it. Yeah. Well, it's it's an it's, it's an expenditure to us because we have to pay it out. But we're we're just paying out what we're getting. It. Okay, that's my presentation. Did you have any questions? Sean, did you have anything? I heard it all. Is that really good for you guys? Well, not all budget processes. And even in the work of time that we've had, it's been a long time. Uh, I'm really proud of what one percent uh, amount of our budget that we're having to use from our contingencies uh, that was two hundred thousand dollars and twenty million dollars. That's a, that's a phenomenal. So thank you all and all the hard work that everybody's done for that. Uh, since this is a public hearing, is there anyone here that would like to stand and speak? Uh, for the budget, or have questions concerning the budget, or speak against the budget, or have any questions? <laughs> All right, you're all right. Uh, and we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. And I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing at 819. Mr. Senator, make a motion to close the public hearing at 819. Second. Very good. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Very good. Yeah. Uh, item number two, uh, which is to approve the 2020 budget amendment, the 2021 budget, and establish the maximum of the We'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'll we'll make a motion to adopt the 2020 budget. Amendments on the 2021 budget. Second. Moving second. No questions concerning comments. Mr. President, I just wanted to remind everybody that while all other cities are burning down, we are actually uh, lowering our taxes. It's coming in. You said I think two point two million or something. Somebody was talking. Two point two million. Yeah. The, the overall bill levy is dropping. Is there a right? Yeah. Call them. Call them. The boxes check. Yeah. So it's still going down potentially. As long as it's called. I was reading the PDF at one point. I was just trying to predict the library was holding so steady to their budget. It only went up by 100 bucks, but they're no let me also drop down by uh, almost three mil uh, or point three mil on there that I saw. The library is up by Correct. Yeah.
Oh, you did a great job. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Our staff is awesome. We're really good here for it. These bikes are also clean and easy to read for everybody. Yes. Part of partake the uh, award you guys want. So thanks for that. I'll stop that one. I just like to reiterate really too also about the efficient steps efforts. And I think it's important to note that it wasn't last year that Frank put us in the three positions on the team, continuing to serve the nature of the project for the last four or five years that they set the precedent and put us in the position to be able to to weigh in this stuff. The motion is to adopt the 2020 budget amendments and the 2021 budget. Wood? Stevens? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Uh, Gurley? Yes. Kip? Briefs? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Shannon? Yes. May the motion pass? Thank you. On item number three, we take your request for the Cedar Waterline project. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm the Marshal Support Director. So I have a question here for approval of a couple of change orders. Cedar Waterline project. One of them, essentially, uh, about eighteen thousand one hundred seventy dollars for the installation of a six-inch gauge valve on Second Street. And in addition, four service connections. And you order two, and you have twelve hundred fifty-nine dollars and twenty-one cents. It's going to replace the five broken valve pops. Total amount of change orders is nineteen thousand four hundred twenty-nine dollars and cents. And the rest of it is increase in contract cost. Questions you may have on this specific project. Or anything you'd like. Uh, Mr. Mayor, make a motion to approve a change order in the total amount of nineteen thousand four hundred twenty-nine dollars ninety-eight six to physic construction for additional water line repair work. So I got a second question. We'll start down here with the motion. Right up here, we'll do it. Yeah. Where was the water break? Right? Is that the one? Well, it says that they had to, but I'm pretty sure that they had to uh, dig up an area before they found the leaves or Motion is to approve the change orders in the total amount of $19,429.98 to Kissick Construction for additional waterline repair work. Thompson? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Kip? Shannon? Yes. Wood? Yes. Gurley? Mackey? Yes. Reeves? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Well, on that number four, Unity Center, I'm going to be working on the Uh, there are two options here on this. Uh, 
Say that a lot of the gutter, a lot of the guttering on this building. I'm not sure what the age of it is, but if you're looking around the building, it's. I mean, it probably needed to be replaced some time ago. Um, we've got a few locations over here in particular where you can see the erosion, and then you can start to see where the, the issues are forming um, on the concrete or on the concrete and mortar. And well, that's one of the issues with all the buildings. Why you need to be cut point and the mortar starts to wash away. And then we also have a, another issue over on this corner here. There's a higher level roof and then a lower level roof. Uh, there's perpetual uh, issues, just water coming in. So again, the viability of the building is somewhat at stake, I, I would say, um, in as far as if you start to have issues with water and the erosion and what have you, um, you might as well just say sign our building. And that's somewhat of a strong statement, but I think we're there as far as the issues like that. It looks like um, I, I believe that they work with the other to 
We're going to have to. The only tie ins that they're doing are along the what is this, southwest area. Anything else is going to be something that we're going to have to address. I did talk. Um, a few months ago, when we started going down this road with Jared Masters, who's um, our supervisor over facilities parks, um, we're going to have to come in and backfill a lot of this road anyway. So we'll we'll look at tying in those um, drain systems at that point in time because it's to your point, they're they're in need of repair as well. It's on the radar, absolutely. really quick All right. part of it is that these gutters will tie in with what they're putting on the 1918 building so that might be some of the reason for the difference in cost there is there a higher grade material um but again the intent of that was just to try to keep some level of consistency between the two buildings but we can definitely look into it system that's there because they, we did have underground drains on the south side of the building um, but because of the rerouting of everything there they actually ripped all that out and so now it's flowing out to the street so once the project is all done um, both projects the, the underground drains are already installed the gutters that we're talking about tonight will go into those underground drains on the south location here the PVC will be removed um, so that's yeah, and KBS will um, they put that PVC up, so they're going to be the ones that are going to be taken. Change order for that. It's coming through. If it if it does, it will probably come with the recommendation not to approve it. But. <laughs>
The motion is to approve Premier Roofing for option one in an amount not to exceed $62,000. Curly? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Wood? Yes. Kip? Yes. Reeves? Yes. Motion passes. <laughs> Um, just really quickly, we talked about it a little bit during um, the budget conversation, but again, uh, through the process that Wyandotte County uh, devised, the city was awarded uh, about $780,000 out of the CARES Act funding um, that came to the county via the state. Uh, Wyandotte County in total was, was provided about $37 million. Um, so again, we are still working through that process. Uh, and hopefully we'll get the money sometime. Um, also just wanted to point out, we've talked about this on a few different occasions, but we did just get some preliminary scoring through Mark, um, Mid-American Regional Council. They do have the STT and then there's also CMAC and then Alternative Transportation Program and all, all these pro programs that ultimately result in allocation of federal dollars towards transportation projects. Um, two projects that the city submitted, uh, one of which is 138th Street, which is a um, project that we've been working on for some time now. Um, that scored very highly, which is the highest um, rank that it can have. There's not a lot that are within that, that field. Um, and then also Tiblo Transit, uh, if you recall, is part of the, um, I'm going to actually forget it for once, the Tri-City Multimodal Redevelopment Plan. Uh, um, there was a conversation about having a multimodal sort of, I just chalk it up to saying a union station, but on a very small scale. Um, th this has been something we've been talking about. Um, ultimately, it could be located really anywhere in the core, but we do have available space on the south side of this um, site where the parking lot of City Hall was at. Again, that was um, also highly aligned with the connected KC. 2050 plan. So again, this is the first step in prioritization for these projects, both of which are in the neighborhood of about $3 million. For comparison's sake, uh, the Riverview 110th project at um, Edwardsville is currently pursuing this. That is a project that was part of this process two or three years ago now. Um, so again, just to kind of give some relevance there. Uh, and then lastly, um, I have reached out to Julianne Van Lu, who is the Wyandotte County Health uh, Department Director. Um, she will actually be in attendance at our next council meeting to give just uh, similar to what Kathy Briney did uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, again, just trying to have some county officials come out here and kind of give a, a good overview of exactly what county dollars go towards. Um, she's obviously a big topic here in, in Bonner Springs, um, but obviously the um, idea for coming at this juncture with, with everything going on, uh, I thought was a, a great opportunity just to have some, again, high level discussion of what um, the function is of the health department and ultimately uh, parlay that into the uh, issues, um, recovery, uh, so on with COVID-19. So if you do have any specific questions that um, you'd like to see addressed, feel free to forward those to me. Um, so I can get those to Julianne so that she can adequately prepare for that conversation. Um, and with that, that concludes my report. I think. I realized it on Saturday morning when I saw the sign was gone. So, yeah. Um, so, yes, I haven't heard of anything going in there. That's obviously always one of the issues with those types of um, buildings is they are built by design for those specific users. Um, so I, I don't have any update of, of anybody going in there. What? Remember, Mike. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know if we're stalled or if we're moving forward. But it's Frank Engler coming forward. It's my understanding that since we last talked about this, we have done that with some chemical applications. Although that's going to take a few weeks before you see the full results of that. So it looked like there was some new growth coming up through it. I think it's still going to take a few weeks. You're going to have to make an application. We then you have to make another application. That's fine. Just sure. Yeah. yeah. But we're at chemical here. <laughs> Instead of manual, better living through chemistry. Yeah. Um, also, uh, the area along the road of Lakewood and Silver Hill, there's some properties there on the back up to Lakewood on the west side that just that the property owners haven't been doing their part. But you know, the person there on the corner of, of the Silver Hill and Lakewood, it looks like he's doing good, but then everybody. To the south of that looks like it's not going to be and then a little bit on the north side of Lakewood there also. Uh, north side of Metropolitan from Nettleton down to Lakewood, a lot of stuff is growing there. Looks like it's about three or four foot tall again. And I believe that belongs to the utility, does it not? I think. And that's up on the metro, I know that there's much sight. Yeah, so it needs to have something. Yeah. So somebody needs to call somebody or whatever. Yeah, just have a G. Thanks for the spray. It's a long uh, spring brief. I noticed that got done here a few days ago and it's making a big difference. Thanks to you for that. I noticed there was uh, the International Order of Odd Fellows at the south end of Lakewood. There's a building there off the right with a tree. It's covered with vining, and about half of that vining looks like it's poison ivy. So, not the same thing there. And I know they're busy, but I'm just pointing these things out. I know they just do it whenever they can. So, so, I think they're doing a good job. I'm not complaining in any way whatsoever. It's just kind of bring things up that I see. One of the things that I thought was very interesting, while many places are defunding police, we're building a new police So it's 35 and 100. Um, I thought that's pretty cool that both um, 
Justine and Matt, which have nothing to do with that. Matt's the president, and Justine is the media manager, and maybe treasurer? Okay. Who's treasurer? Yeah. Um, and it was neat to hear with them on that. They had an excellent show, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, the second one was, I was going to bring up for anybody interested in the mass stuff. We made national news, uh, non-positive way for uh, the reason that uh, our Governor Kelly and Mayor Alvey have reinstituted the mask wearing. Uh, it was found that all of that data was actually uh, not exactly false, but they were using some creative graphs to be able to push the mask ordinance further out. Uh, and we actually have a honor plan that uh, broke down, uh, she's a pharmacy major and all that, broke down all the mask wearing and the graph, reinstituted it and uh, put all the members up on Facebook um, in a proper graph way to show that counties that are not wearing masks have actually decreased in COVID cases and deaths and all that, and all of the information that they were pushing to Keep masks is actually false. For my, well, the other portion of that was uh, the data for Wyandotte County, or the UG came out for payroll. And their top 10 people in their staff, all of them make over $150,000. So if anybody in Wyandotte County is curious where their taxes are going, a lot of it is exorbitant payroll. Uh, Doug Cox is on that for 224000 And this was actually brought up by a citizen. Her name is Trina, uh, Trina Crawford. And she was saying she was complaining because he's been in for six years. And every year, uh, including last year, this year, and after the next three years, their budget is supposed to be negative of $26 million. And the reason I bring that up is because we're a $22 million city. And our much, much smaller staff is able to do a phenomenal job and even push in the pandemic to lower the taxes or at least keeping the same. I think it's ridiculous what they're doing. The reason I bring that up is for my uh, positive. I wanted to thank Mayor and all the council members here. Uh, I was running for um, against Tom Burroughs and the GOP and one of the senators actually shot me a message and they I blew or we blew the numbers out of one. And I say we because it wasn't me running for office, it was genuinely all of us. I wanted to greatly thank the mayor for not holding it personally that I ran against him last year, even though he got 75% of the vote. Um, I wanted to thank all those people that ended the vote for this year, uh, because we had, I think, 1,100 people vote, and 75% of that, and we had 1,343 so far votes uh, whenever I ran. So I just want to thank the general constituency. And I really appreciate it. I hope you guys show up. If there are anybody has any questions, uh, you can email me, call me, whatever. I can't answer any of it. Um, and I'm trying to run a similar campaign. I don't plan on saying any of Tom's 24 years of history. I didn't say anything about Mayor. He did a great job. I'm letting Tom run on his not so great track. Uh, thank you guys. I'll stop that one. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I uh, took a tour of the National Nation Building and Police Department new facility um, last week. And um, I don't know how many people have had a chance to do that. If you have an interest in that, please don't. Uh, please try and uh, gang together to go do that. A good number of people not that we have to find them all on time. But he was gracious enough to give me a tour, and it is coming along phenomenally. Um, it's, uh, it's going to impress the parts of the windows and the width of the hallways and the areas that have, that have been reclaimed. Uh, you, you can start to see where those uh, areas will be and how they interact with the community and out, outside and uh, looking through the windows. The windows I have a completely different feel than the commercial building does, which is being very correct. Um, you all will be familiar. This will be a facility that is uh, some iconic for something to be very 
very proud of our our opportunity. Uh, the police station looks like it has begun first. Um, it's coming right along. They have a bunch of people in there working all the time. Uh, the Coico uh, or the Sally Ford. Sally Ford uh, is coming along. Uh, and they're working on all that. And I can, the next big thing will be a clinic charger for me, and I'll be able to see what, you know, how it really looks up to the building, but it, it's all coming around very nicely. And that's where I saw the building on the roof and the flat roof of the house. You all have that side of the snow that's happening. So this uh, water has been an issue on this corner building. Uh, so we need to stay out of it. I'd like to compliment the Parks and on the Frisbee Golf Tournament that they're having, or the regional championships that they're having here this next weekend. This is a regionally renowned Frisbee Golf Festival. Those of you who so it, it's very, uh, very nice compared to all the other Christmas offers. That's, that's awesome. um, and the new signage looks great. Uh, also, the police department, I just saw on Facebook, I'm going to take advantage of this kind of signing uh, for the mask mandate that businesses are able to get and put up at their businesses. Uh, the police department has uh, has their work cut out for them. They're primarily uh, going to utilize education to help our community with the uh, concerns. So, if you have anyone that you know of that needs uh, additional signing uh, permits to our local mandate, you're welcome to get them in touch with the police department. Other than that, I have any questions. Please. I haven't seen that. I will. Uh, we'll take a look at it tomorrow. It is obviously due to be replaced anyway, so I just want to check and see what what we're actually dealing with. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you.